Oh, hey, Jackson. What are you doing, boy? Everybody meet Jax. This is kind of the character of the house here. If it ain't between him or the kiddos, he's ornery just as much as the, my kiddos are. And that's Sophie. All my new subscribers, if you haven't met my pups, there they are. Look, this is all he wants. This is all he wants. He wants a ball. Look, sit, sit. Get the ball. Come here. Good boy. Welcome back to another one, guys. And today, 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 it's a good one. A lot of you have requested this video. This was one of those comments that I've been asking for you guys to drop down below and let me know what you guys want me to do for how-to videos. What are you guys wanting to learn? You know, whether it's on Foul Fridays or whether it's on just simple how-to videos that I post throughout the week, like this one. What is it that all you beginners, novice, advanced, any of you waterfowlers out there, what are you wanting me to do? What are you wanting me to teach you? What are you wanting to know more about? And this one was actually requested a couple times. Um, has to do with blinds. So here we have the A-frame. Oh boy. Ah. And here we have the layout blind. Now most of you out there have probably used layout blinds more than A-frames or panel blinds or really anything else in that matter. A lot of you use layout blinds because they're so versatile you can get low to the ground and it's easy to hide yourself in them. But today what we're going to go over is when do you use what? What's the best situations to use an A-frame for comfort because you get to set up it's a little more comfortable and then when do you just have to end up using a layout blind? Because myself, A-frames, we have two of them, and they have spoiled me rotten. They're so comfortable. It's so easy to film in those. Layout blinds, they're not as comfortable. You're laying down. The shooting's a little bit more difficult. I find out of an A-frame, a lot better shooting, more comfort, happier people. So, we're gonna set the old A-frame up real quick. I'm gonna give you guys a good old time lapse in a shady spot back here because it's probably 94 degrees already in the beginning of June, which, yeah, I'm sure you guys are dealing with it too in the Midwest. But first, before we go any farther, check out the Ducks Freedom shirt. Look at that bad boy. And we got the America shirt, and then we got the Freedom Cup Ducks, and we got it in a bunch of different colors. But guys, head on over to DucksWaterfowl.com. I will link all those shirts and this one as well in the description below. Go grab yourself a dope Freedom t-shirt before the 4th of July is actually here. Get them now so you make sure you got them. Whenever you guys purchase something, it goes directly to helping the channel and helping me do more of these videos. Whether it's hunts, whether it's how-to videos, doesn't matter. Every shirt, every hoodie, every hat purchase goes directly to support an old Bob and the YouTube channel. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you do go purchase one, well, let's build the old A-frame real quick. Old Soph, where are you going, man? Soph, 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 Soph. Woo, well, <laughs> broke a little bit of sweat. Not too bad, but there she is. I got the front panel on. I didn't put the back on because there's just really no reason, but five minutes by myself, got that bad boy up in five minutes. I was a little rusty because you know, it's been a few months since the season, but there's the back. This is just the frame. If you guys haven't seen these, or if you guys are interested in one of these blinds, I do not make these. I do not, you know, I'm not associated with the company that makes these, but if you want one, I will link it in the description below. They're extremely expensive, but they work. As far as the layout blind, I'll also uh, link it down below if you guys are looking for one. Again, not my product, not a Ducks product at all. Uh, hopefully we'll have the stuff coming out next year. And when I have my own blinds come out, I'm telling you, they're gonna be nice, they're gonna be durable, they're gonna be sturdy, they're not gonna break as easy. And yeah, so any of you guys that own this same frame, you know what I mean? It's kind of flimsy. The, the metal is a little thin. It's a great blind. I love it. It has suited us so well, so well. And so many hunts, we've, we've had big hunts, but expensive. So let's move on. So for all my viewers watching this video, this is really for the beginners. For all my beginners that are looking to learn quick that's why we have these foul fridays that's why we have these how-to videos this one may not have went up on a friday but still you get the point it's for all you guys because i want to help you guys advance you guys faster get you better quicker 
I'm not saying I know it all. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I just want to help you guys out, and that's what the channel is here for. So as we can tell, here's the layout blind. See how low she is? She's only about a foot tall. Well, here is the A-frame. Look how much taller. We're talking, we're talking four foot or a little more, and you know, about eight foot long. The A-frame fits up to four guys three comfortable up to four though if you have more than one of them you can actually butt them together so it actually creates another seat when you when you buckle them together so you actually buckle two of these things together makes it bigger so you can fit more people with two of them you can have seven to eight pretty darn comfortable but this is the deciding factor of what you're going to use for what field you're hunting with a frames really the only times that i'm ever to hunt them I don't know about you guys, but if it's different, leave a comment down below, is tree rows. I hunt tree rows, tree rows, tree rows with A-frames. Tree rows allow you to get completely concealed, completely out of the decoys, so, so they just don't see you at all. But, 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 tree row hunting, it creates a lot more distance. Shooting distance is usually going to be greater. So if you're hunting out of a fence line or a tree row, with trees under a tree, anything like that, big structure, you better believe that a lot of times you're gonna be decoying them birds you know, pretty far away from you. You're gonna be having 30, 40 yard shots quite a bit, if not 50 yard shots. So that's where a lay down blind comes in. If you wanna be up close and personal and do business at 10, 15, 20 yards with the birds, well, that's when you use your layout blind. What justifies being able to use these two? Cover, cover, cover. So. Let's say you find a feed in a green wheat field, right? Well, that blind isn't going to work in the middle of that green wheat field, and neither is the A-frame at all. Not going to happen. Cut corn fields, you can a lot of times get away with hiding and cut corn fields in layout blinds. There's been a couple very, very rare times that I've been able to sit this bad boy in the middle of a field somewhere. I, I usually had to find a uh, stump or a pivot or maybe let's say a pipe or pole come out of the ground or a marker in the middle of the field that the farmer actually cut around and the big weeds built up around it. That's the only time you can conceal these. Make sure you are concealed, you hide this thing. And above all, above all guys, this void right here, this void right here, you gotta make sure you put grass and blind over the top of you because it's a black hole if not. And I used to not really look into it much but after this year, I will say that we're gonna have to TP the top of this thing, meaning just cover it, you know, TP this way, TP that way, completely cover it, which it kind of sucks for filming and, and shooting because you got grass in your face when you stand up, but you gotta cover the big void up top. You gotta do it. Why the layout blind is so versatile is because if you do have a cut corn field, a cut milo field, something that has a lot of trash in it, by trash I mean stubble, cut stubble, dead plants you know what i'm saying big leaves stalks the whole nine yards you're able just to go gather a bunch of it completely crowd around it over it weave it make it just blend you in and get you out of them decoys when you're actually sitting in them so the layout blind if you can hide it if you can get it hidden i'm telling you you'll have way better luck at getting the birds decoyed closer and finishing in your lap closer just closer one huge, 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 this, this is a huge tip for all you beginners out there. And uh, what I found is, guys, whenever you can hide out in the middle of a field, not I'm not saying smack dab in the center, but out in the middle, away from the tree row, away from the edges. But what I'm trying to say is, naturally, a lot of times birds don't like to decoy. They might land next to trees naturally, but you trying to decoy them close to trees, it's hard. So that's why I say, a lot of times you'll you'll be taking 40 and 50 above 30 yard shots if you're hunting at a tree row. So get in the middle of the field if you can. What we're going to do now, we're going to go drive around and I'm going to show you a few fields that I hunt and I'm going to show you a few tree rows that we avidly hunt. And again, all this is because of wind. I In all of my how-to videos, you know, last year, I have always during the hunts, you guys watch during the hunts and I'm always talking about wind, wind wind always make sure you try to put that wind at your back if you can't get it at your back hunt them off a side wind well out here in the field 
this is a just a good example for a field um, this is actually a planted bean field right now but as you can tell it was good good stocks now this is something that you could hide the layout blinds in you know what I'm saying so all this down stockage that's what you obviously you're gonna blind your layout blind with a lot of you know that but we're gonna run through the whole deal here now that tree row right there that tree row let's take a look at it so this tree row that is the north side of the field now during the season a lot of times what happens guys what happens we have a north wind so the wind is coming this way hunting tree rows is great for the a-frame blind that's where it really comes in handy and that's where the a-frame blind really thrives that's where you can use it a lot but you have to have the right tree row and the right wind to be able to use it so just like this uh, little patch of trees here as you can see the tree row extends that way but here's a little patch of trees here and this would be perfect to put an a-frame blind right underneath that bad boy just like this but a lot of times you can tuck a-frames back in really easy and and hide them underneath treetops that's that's what we do a bunch is hide a-frames underneath trees a lot of times it doesn't even have to be a full tree row it can just be one lonely tree just like that but just like this here guys this is kind of, this kind of resembles a really really bad winter wheat field so a lot of us in the Midwest we have winter wheat fields and a lot of time our winter wheat fields this is not a winter wheat field but it's a good example and it resembles one because a lot of times you'll have green little bitty strips like this little bitty strips of wheat but a lot of dirt not much cover like this so what I'm getting at it's hard to hide lay down blinds in 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 nothing you have to have some good stubble some good trash as i like to call it up top so you can really blind and hide and really put all that trash on top of them make it look like a just a hill you know make it make it look as natural as possible always go for the most natural approach here we are so here's a really good example right here this is two trees and i love finding two little trees like this smack dab in the center of a field because you can hide on either side of them so if you want to hide in the middle if you want to hide on this side or that side of the tree or this side or that side it literally gives you so many options and that is where an a-frame comes in really really well when you can find hides just like that that is where A-frames really come into effect. That's where you can really use them because you're going to be able to get into the center of the field. Now, you're still going to be around structure, and the birds might be a little weary of it, but they're not going to be near as weary as ha having to land beside a huge forest tree row where there might be predators or, or something, you know, in decoys. Decoys, it's harder. Naturally, they might land there because that's where, naturally, there might be the most food on the ground is up against that tree row. For some reason, maybe the farmer's combine spit out, needed adjusting or something. Maybe had the fan turned up too high and was blowing uh, grain out the back. You never know. But trying to decoy birds is much different than naturally seeing them land. If you're naturally seeing them land around structure or around tree rows or around trees just like that, just know... It's not going to be as easy as it looks because now you're decoying them with fake decoys and fake calls. So, just always keep in mind, keep everything as natural as possible. Always have the most natural presentation that you possibly can. Well, yep, we're at a pond now. Why? Because I've used the A-frame on pond hunts many a times. Whether it was a goose hunt, whether it was a duck hunt, just like this here. Here's a perfect little tree where you could put the A-frame right in front of or right beside. It'd get you right up to the water's edge and you could hunt the heck out of that little spot. Just like this, where the tree overhangs, throw your A-frame there, brush it up real good, you are good to go. I know that we could all, you know, in winter when this all dies off, all this greenery, we could all bring our lay down blinds and throw them in here, but I'm telling you guys, I keep pushing the A-frame and being able to sit upright when you shoot. One, because it's a lot safer, Two, you're going to have a lot better comfort. Your comfort's going to be a lot better. You're not going to be laying on your back and having to set up all the time to shoot. And three, your accuracy shooting is way better when you can stand up or just sit and shoot. 
rather than laying on your back and having to sit up. Because when you're racking off shells, you're using all them ab muscles and them lower back muscles to keep you upright because your feet are usually gonna be a little higher than your butt, sometimes. But you get what I'm saying? Shooting laying down sucks. Like your accuracy just sucks. I found out, yes, when you do it a lot, like I did this year laying in white on my back, you do get better at it with time, but it takes time to get good at shooting on your back. So, I recommend A-frame hunting and being able to set up or stand up when you're shooting as much as possible. Safety, comfort, accuracy. Layouts in fields, if you do it, make sure you blind them. Stuff some decoys around you, some full bodies, some silos, some socks. Get hit. But if you guys like these how-to videos, for all my beginners, all, anybody out there that's watching, if you like them, drop a thumbs up. And if you guys haven't, subscribe because I'm going to keep bringing you guys these how-to's. Whatever how-to videos you guys want to see, waterfowl related, drop a comment down below and I'm always looking at them. I'm always taking notes. That's where this video in particular, this idea came from, was from one of you subscribers. So I thank you very much. Go support your boy and pick up one of the Freedom Duck shirts for the 4th of July. Get it now so you have it in time. Thank you for watching y'all. You know I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. Peace!